Yo guys, what is up? This is Nick. We are back on The Witcher 3, uh, doing the Blood and Wine DLC, and uh, sorry for the late upload and the limited upload today. Uh, I was going to sit down and record a bunch today, but a friend I um, haven't seen in a while stopped by, so uh, we hung out for a while, uh, and then I had, to, I had to do some mowing at the mow the yard, and I had to... Uh, clean up a couple things in the yard and stuff like that, and I had to water flowers because my family's, like I said in videos before, like my family's not home, so I gotta do all this crap by myself. And so that took a huge chunk out of my day, so just getting down to recording now. Uh, I'll probably just set this video up for midnight. Um, it may be even a little bit later than that that this goes up. Um, so just keep that in mind. Should be back to normal tomorrow. I'm uh, gonna sit down and try to get some stuff recorded. Okay, I can handle these guys. Let's fight them. Let's get this guarded treasure. Okay, one down. What is it? Foglet, get over here. Hello? Get over here. Come on! Oh, what the? The stupid... Cut out, okay. They're not cut... Oh, my God. I'm sick of fighting things. They can hide under the ground. Hide in fog. Just hide in general. Like, just... Fight me! Stop running away! There we go. Okay, so we picked up a letter and a bunch of items. Alright, uh, Smiggle Circus Notes. Uh, I've lost him, my dearest. Someone has stolen him, my darling, my treasure, my spoon. That creature from the Caroberta woods must have been it. All the help says the town... Wait. All the help says the town's a buzz with talk about missing spoon. Oh, this is this is actually kind of interesting because this is talking about the 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 white that we're going to see uh, for much time now. Indeed, since this creature has stolen cutlery from all Beauclair and has not yet been caught by our valiant guard, it means it must be clever, tricky even, and anyone clever can be swayed by arguments, especially financial ones. So I asked my jeweler. Nathanburg to make me a spoon out of pure gold, which I shall take to Caroberta Woods to find that monster and propose a trade. A spoon of gold for my precious spoon. Alright, so maybe this spoon that I just got from here, because we did pick that up. We picked up a gold spoon off of his body. Maybe that will uh, be important. Or maybe it will help in negotiations. I guess I can check. If it's in key items, then it will. If it's not, then probably not. Oh, quest items. No, it's in other. Spoon made of pure gold. Alright. Anything else? Here we go, a little bit more stuff here. Hey Roach, you want to get over here away from... Roach! Why is Roach not coming over here? Like, as soon as... I'm gonna have to run away. Hold on. Because as soon as I go over there to get Roach, he's gonna get spooked by whatever enemies are over here. I'm actually pretty close to the, the objective. Let's just run there. Is this the House of Spoons? Trastamara Hunting Cottage. This is not it, but... Alright, I was gonna say, why not check it out, but you can't get in. At least through the front. No, Geralt. Geralt, get down. There's gotta be a way into this house. Maybe, well, maybe not. Well, I guess there isn't a way into this house. Why do you... I better get a key to this, like... I hate when games do- why put this here with a marker if I can't get inside of it? 
Let it be a quest. To get inside up there. Alright, here we go. Let me put my sword away. Seem a little less hostile. Strange. Get a sense that the spoons are beating out some kind of rhythm. A message. Trying to tell me something. Probably to leave. That's probably what they're trying to tell us. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Sounds like a curse, all right. Somebody's clearly obsessed. Regis mentioned the place might be cursed. Can't be a coincidence. Need to look around. Alright, well, in we go. What a pigsty. Need to search it thoroughly. Find a way to collect some white saliva. White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. No spoon you have shall say to you. Whatever lives here treated that literally. Still searching for the right spoon. Wait, so... A spoon key. Sophisticated crafting. Tag bears a description. White's a true collector. Spoon. I, pretty ordinary. Maybe a little I think old. I might know where that key goes to. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. Mogul Circus owner of the pheasant tree. Oh, okay. So that key that we picked up was the guy that we found dead. Um, and it's forged at Christofferson and Sons Workshop. Belongs to Smigel Circus owner of the pheasant tree. So. Hmm. Skeletons. Doubt they came here willingly. This have anything to do with the curse? None shall sit and dine with you at your table. It'd make sense. Bunch of spoons, decaying letter. Oh god, this is long. Alright. Uh, dear Master Levesier, uh, I know you track outlaws for pay. I have an unusual assignment for you. No doubt you wonder why I have drawn you out here, and why we cannot meet in person. You see, in my present situation, any kind of meeting is very risky. Not so much for me as for the person with whom I meet, for I am affiliated by a curse, or afflicted by a curse. And, or as I hope, and why I have turned to you, the side effects of medicine given to me some time ago by a herbalist. Uh, soon after I visited this herbalist, she disappeared without a trace. I desperately wish to understand my illness. Sorry, I lost my voice. So I wish to hire you to find her. When you do, learn as much from her as you can about the medicine she gave me. If my suffering is a result of her wickedness, then make her provide an antidote. I assure you I have ample wealth and will reward you with no small part of it for your service. If it turns out my suffering is not the fault of the herbalist, please let her go. I will then have a different task for you, because this shall mean I am afflicted by a terrible curse which only the gods can cure. I believe it was cast upon me by a certain beggar who came by the manor while I was hosting a soiree for a few friends. If you can find that vagrant, I will pay you double. Sadly, all I remember of him is that he sold mirrors. I am aware that is not much aid for your hunt, yet I trust in your considerable talents and wish you the best of luck. Marlene de Trastamara. Okay, we've got another spoon Woman's here. name scratched into this wooden spoon. Romantic. No claw or fang marks. Probably choked to death. Uh, here we go. Here's another spoon. White's obsessed. Real collector. Thoroughbred. Broken neck. Indentation in the skull's lateral surface. Smacked in the head with something heavy. Right arm bit right off. Teeth all knocked out. Somebody tried to force feed him. Um. 
Not really seeing anything else. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Aha! Here we go. Where is he at? Hmm. Actually does seem like a white's lair. Bit atypical, but still. Cauldron should be somewhere around here. Ah, we gotta go deeper in. Spoon. Pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. Alright, where's our white? Okay, so I assume down there is the correct way. Cauldron I was looking for. Why it's not particularly tidy. I want to go down. Greater green mutagen. Another right? spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. Table set. White who lives here is getting ready for some sort of feast. White that lives here, definitely afflicted by a curse, and it's been trying desperately to lift it. White's obsessed, a real collector, thoroughbred. Cauldron's empty, unfortunately. We just need some brew. I'm afraid he won't get that. No choice but to hide and wait for the saliva glands and their bearer. Need a spot that'll let me observe the cauldron. Okay, that's where we need to go, but what do we got down here? Okay, nothing. Thousands of them here. White's been a collector for years. Words of wisdom on beastly curses. Uh, monstrous curses and their description. Introduction. Curses that change a fellow into a monster. Oh, so this is a man that got changed. Into a monstrous creature have existed since the dawn of time. They have a variety of orig origins and a variety of effects. It normally happens that a mage or sorceress casts a curse and the spell changes the subject. It doesn't always happen straight away. Sometimes the person who has been cursed changes slowly, bit by bit. It also happens that a normal fellow can cast a curse. Someone whose conscience is clear and who has done good in their life. Such a person can acquire power and thus the aggrieved can place a curse on the evildoer. Uh, such curses are strong and cannot be removed easily. Thus, everything by which human suffering is atoned is long-lasting and painful. Alright. A little creepy. Okay, so that's keyed off. Alright, nothing. Alright, let's go wait for the white. Hey, buddy. Let's try to lift the curse. A 
not gonna hurt you. Wanna help? I've seen the words of the curse on the walls. Think I know how to lift it. Mother, I'm I will I'm not afraid to kick your ass. Are you gonna beat me with a chair? You tried to bring folk here, convince them to sit at the table with you, right? Well, I'm gonna be your guest now. Your willing guest. Just need a bit for Regis. And now we'll tend to you. Need to get this right. Words of the curse were None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Oh shit. So does that mean not eat with hold on. Need to get this right. Words of the curse were None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. I swap spoons? Let's not use spoons. We can't use spoons. No, that won't work. You've been looking for a spoon that would feed you, but there's no such spoon. We need to eat without spoons. Not sure we had to throw them on the ground, but... What the hell did I just eat? Open your eyes. You need to see your likeness. Where the hell is he going? Expected. Need to see what happened to the white. Won't be hard to find given its stench. I could just skip this all together. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Oh, hold up. Hold up. I missed some rooms over here. Oh, stained diary. What we got here? Oh my gosh, the reading. Alright, let's do this. For a few days now, I've been having dizzy spells. I've never experienced anything like this before. If it carries on, although I can't see on witchcraft and sorcery, I'll have to visit a herbalist. The dizziness has not got, gone away. Worst of all, it's been joined by pain, so strong that at times I cannot see. I've been to the herbalist, a repulsive old crone, uh, looked at me like she had seen a monster. Uh, she gave me some cursed mixture that I have to drink twice a day. It's not helping at all. Today, like every day, I looked in the mirror and I was lost for words. I usually check that I don't have any wrinkles or bags under my eyes, but today there are no wrinkles, but I'd rather that there were. I have hair growing under my breasts. It's horrible. It's got to be because of those damned herbs. I went to the herbalist to smash her face in, but her chambers were empty. She must have known what would happen to me and liked it. My family isn't starting to is starting to suspect something, although I am cutting the hair back, which is growing back faster and faster. I've tried to put the idea out of my head, but I can't hold it back any longer. Maybe it wasn't the herbs that have led to this, but a curse placed upon me by an old beggar whom I had to chase off one time. Uh, I've, I have to find out. I want to hire someone who can find the herbalist. I cannot think about... I cannot think, and it is getting hard to write. Loneliness, no family. Eat, I want to eat. Not a good spoon, empty spoons. Nothing to eat, 
It hurts. Mirror lies. No, I. Our girl realized she was changing into a monster. Recorded it in her diary. Poignant. I don't know why I'm looting all these spoons. All right, let's follow this. I'm assuming it's probably going to that house. Would be my guess. Hold up, what is this? I gotta inspect some stuff. That's locked. I think I know what that led to. More spoons. Yep, more spoons. There's a spoon collector I can sell this to. Ugly right. bastard. What the shit is this? What the f Is this like a hell dog? I'm like, what is this? What the hell are those? Bar guests? Oh my god, these what the hell are these things? They're like hell dogs. It's weird. Where did this bitch run off to? There she is. Shh, easy. Not gonna hurt you. Eat. I, I must eat. Take you someplace safe. Where am I taking her? I want to say something, but I know as soon as I start getting into a thought. Yeah, see, told you. Hey, look, it's my house. So I took her by the hand and led her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? Told me her story on the way here. Her name's Marlena. She was once the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom. An ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlena didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again, since she adored feasts. He swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what did? Someone had to sit down and share a meal with her, of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons, and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? Simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But, most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. 
She will be in good hands here. Thanks. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon. All right, so now we need to report back to Regis. Where is the fast travel point here? I think that'll be the episode once we report back to Regis. Make sure I get to the... It's over this way. Level 39, getting to a more respectable point to to uh, be able to do all the side quests and stuff. Well, since it's called the Lodge of Sorceresses, not Lodge of Sorcerers, I would assume it's an all female thing. What the hell? Am I... I don't know what's... Hit. Okay. I don't know. We're off. Alright, Regis. your friend's hand will make for a nice broth. Hmm. You've clearly honed your sense of humor. But we are not cannibals, Geralt. I took a fragment of tissue from the hand. It will suffice to prepare some resonance. What did you do with the rest? I cremated it, as our codex commands. A raven told me you'd acquired the necessary ingredient. Send your spies after me? My watchers. Was something to go wrong? I could then arrive quickly to help. Managed fine alone, but thanks for the thought. Gonna need much longer to finish brewing resonance? Mentioned the last ingredient, too. What about that? That, I fear, might prove troublesome. You see, to use the concoction to summon the memories of one, the solution must contain the blood of another specimen of the same species. Shouldn't be a problem. I happen to know a higher vampire who should be willing to help. Right, Regis? It's not that simple, I'm afraid. While you were away, I tried my damnedest to identify a replacement, but, alas, none such exists. Not sure I understand what the problem is. Can't we just draw some of your blood? The blood must be in an agitated state. As I'm certain you know, higher vampires can change their corporeal shell. As our flesh changes, so does our blood's chemical composition. To make a long story short, I shall need to induce in myself a state of strong psychokinetic arousal. In brief, madness, rabidity. And that stands to be very, very dangerous. Dangerous? Why? I mean, you'll still be you, right? True. But I should be highly agitated, in a state of fury. You know better than I that fury cannot be controlled. If you've ever seen an enraged vampire, you know very well that all who find themselves nearby will be in grave danger. How will we handle that? I'd rather not have you lunge at me, claws extended. That makes two of us. But worry not. I've thought it through very thoroughly. Details to follow soon. All right. So what do you want to do? We shall visit Tesha Mudna, an ancient vampire estate. There, we will find cages suspended in the air. I will enter one, be confined. You will lure beasts there. Beasts you will then kill. The bloodletting should prove profuse. Abundant enough so that the blood scent will drive me mad. Wild. Tesham Mutna. What's it like? It is a place of torment. A torture chamber. Long ago, Shortly after we'd arrived in this world, one among us named Kagmar developed such a taste and lust for human blood that in one night he could imbibe an entire village. This brought trouble on the entire species. Common folk wearied quickly of living in constant fear. They began to hunt us. 
Seek the aid of mages and witches in tracking us down. So what? Not like they could ever hope to kill you. But they were bothersome. Forgive the comparison, but when did you last enjoy mosquitoes buzzing around your head? In any case, the other vampires decided something had to be done. Kagmar had to be caught and punished. A torture chamber was thus outfitted in the dungeons of Teshem Mutna. Inside it, a cage made entirely of a special alloy of silver, dalvinite, and meteorite steel. Kagmar was captured and locked in the cage, sat there over two centuries, driven to fury time after time, never able to escape. Thus I know the cage will withstand the fury to which we shall drive my humble being. Little expedition starting to sound dangerous. Think I'd better prepare. I understand completely. Do tell me when you're ready to set off. Alright, so we need to talk to Regis when we're ready to head out. Um, I think we will... Uh, I'm gonna go clear my inventory. I don't know if uh, in this place we're gonna get like vampire relics and items like that. So I think I should probably clear out my inventory at least a bit here, sell some stuff, and uh, get a little bit prepared by. Um, I don't know. I don't think I need to buy anything, but we. I'll. Uh, I'll head back and sell some stuff and do some stuff like that. If there's anything important that I do, I'll let you guys know in the next episode. But in the next episode. We will, um, we will be heading with Regis to the, uh, this vampire torture area. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will, uh, catch you all then. Peace out.